Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital. Today is September 27th. Tomorrow we'll be getting our third iteration of the GDP report. This is really should be a non-event. You can see that the estimates are basically unchanged. The big number will come at also at 8.30. That will be the initial jobless claims. Markets have been paying particular attention to that to try to see if they can sniff out when the unemployment rate will begin to rise. So pay attention to this number. Then, of course, at 10 o'clock, we're going to get pending home sales estimates for, for a decline of 1% versus last month's reading of 0.9. And it's worth pointing out, just because there's so much volatility right now in the rate complex, that there'll be a seven-year auction tomorrow taking place at 1 o'clock. So something you just want to be aware of, because if, if for some reason it doesn't go well and rates spike, that could add to market pressures here in U.S. equities. Um, if we just take a quick look at the NASDAQ, uh, two things point out that I stand out to me. Number one, it appears that we've broken this diamond reversal pattern. That's at least what I'm labeling it as. Some people have labeled it as a head and shoulders with the neckline being broken yesterday as well. There's also, you can take a look at this and see that there's also potentially a, uh, a bear flag pattern that's formed in it as well. So um, basically, no matter how you look at this pattern, there's three different bearish patterns that have developed in the NASDAQ. And and if we just try to think about it in simple terms from another uh, couple of different perspectives, we so far have only um, you know fallen about 61.8% of the first move down. So there's, there's certainly more for this to fall uh, based off of at least an extension of this first drop. So, you know, the key level here being right now 14,550 or so. This is clearly acting as a little bit of an area of support for the market. So we did have a little bit of a volatile day today where we gapped higher, sold off pretty hard, snapped back pretty hard uh, during the afternoon. Mostly this is because we're in a negative gamma regime and this is creating a lot of volatility. So you can see we've been trading around this 14,000 550, 14,560 region. And so this is really sort of an important level because number one, you can see we broke the, the long-term uptrend. We've tested it three times. We failed. And um, at this point, you know, if there's any hope of recapturing this level, you not only really need to see the index gap above this tomorrow, you really want to see the index gap above this trend line. And that's probably a pretty tall order, 14,670. You're, you're talking about what you would need um, is probably about a 50 to 60 basis point move right off the open to try to break us up above this level. And then even then, you're looking at a resistance level at 14,750 with the potential for a gap fill. Um, more from the bearish standpoint, which is what I think we're more in the case of at this point, given that we have this bearish overall tone to the market, um, you know, is really taking out this low. Whether it comes early in the day or whether it comes later in the day, I don't think it really matters. This is a very uh, unstable move higher, and so it leaves me to believe that this is going to be retraced completely and potentially even undercutting this low of 14,440. Typically, when we see these types of you know, big move higher uh, intraday, driven by negative gamma, basically a gamma squeeze driven by option flows, that tends to be unstable and it tends to be reversed pretty quickly. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this uh, fail tomorrow in the NASDAQ. And again, I think the downside is pretty prevalent here. Um, if we just look at it from a little bit of a longer term picture, uh, you can see we're still not even oversold on the RSI. And if we look at the Bollinger Band, we're just basically inside of it at this point. So tough to really even say that the NASDAQ is really significantly oversold at this point. And I would continue to think that we probably have some further downside. Again, I would be watching for a break of this 14,400 because that opens the door to lower levels, maybe 14,200 or so. When we, when we move over to the Dow, it's pretty much been the same story now for, for quite a while. And the Dow is actually looking worse and worse. Uh, as we continue to progress. First of all, again, here you can see we had this, you know, this basically this stagnation period. We broke a major uptrend that had formed in the Dow off the March lows. We gapped lower, almost looking like a breakaway gap, which is certainly not a positive. Today we tested this 33,565 level and we snapped back pretty quickly off of it. But again, if we just take a look, a little bit of a closer look, you can see how we just how we just flirted in and out of the resistance and support zone almost most of the afternoon. 
Again, like the NASDAQ, you have this big rally midday. These tend to be very unstable in these type of environments. And my expectation would be that that's probably going to be undercut as well at 33,300 with the next major um, level of support coming somewhere around this 32,950 area. You can see that that's all the way down here. Um, you know, likewise, you can also take a look and see, you know, if you were to get a break higher tomorrow, potentially above this high of 33,640, um, which isn't really that much further, you know, you could potentially get a little bit of a higher run here in the Dow, 33,734. But again, at this point, I mean, the Dow has had a lot of opportunities to move higher and it just doesn't look like uh, it's an index that wants to go up. And in fact, like the, you know, like the other indexes we've been looking at, it, it again looks like there's this, um, you know, head and shoulders type of pattern in it. And depending upon how you want to, you know, trace it out and how you want to, you know, set it up on your own, um, you could certainly say that, you know, the neckline has been broken, whether you do it this way, or you can say that the neckline has been broken if you even if you do it you know this way so um it seems like a broken pattern at this point it seems like a broken index with your next level of support like i said somewhere around 32,900 to 33,000 if we move overseas and take a look at the dax um it's not that much different here you can see the dax again we clearly broke this support area we've now undercut this 15,320 zone you know, if we take a look and really kind of zoom in here, you can see that there's this gappy area in here right around 15,150. And then there's another gap down here at 14,950. And you can see we're coming up on this 15,150, which would be one area that the DAX could potentially stop at. But um, again, this looks like a big reversal top. And when we get big reversal tops, they tend to not just be you know, little declines. This looks like something that could be much more uh, significant over time. Uh, and so you'd want to really see how this behaves at 15,130. Likewise, if you get a move higher tomorrow, you take out 15,260, you know, and you test this 15,300, it might give you a fairly decent indication whether or not there's actually upside to this. Because if you get here and fail, um, that's going to really tell you a lot about the next move, which is also, I think, likely to be lower at this point. Finally, we take a look at the FTSE. It has a lot of the characteristics of what we've seen in the DAX, where you had this big move higher, uh, and then you came down to it, tested it, came up to it, tested it again on the way down, and then you just couldn't hold it, and now you're moving back down below it. And again, this is a big, sharp rally. These can tend to be you know, unstable patterns and would suggest that we undercut and come back down to the 7525 level. Additionally, if you're looking at it from this standpoint, you know, it looks like there's an uptrend that's on the cusp of being broken or likely to be broken tomorrow. Um, and so you have to be left to wonder that, you know, perhaps we're also looking at a scenario that you're looking at, you know, the, the FTSE returning to the 75300 area. If you can take out this high at 7625 and get back over this trend line, you know, there's room to run maybe back to 76, 79. But again, I, I think you have to see how, you know, it acts in terms of whether or not there's further to go, because there's just a lot of overhead resistance at this point. And you've seen, you know, pretty um, unstable markets, again, not just in the U.S., not just in in um, in Europe, but you've seen them also in Asia. And, you know, Asia is um, you know, sending a lot of signals as well with South Korea, certainly sending uh, very negative signals. Um, you've seen some negative signals coming out of Australia as well. And certainly we've seen a lot of weakness more lately in Hong Kong and, and out of China for obvious reasons uh, due to their economic slowing. And um, certainly when we take a look at and we look at Taiwan, you can see it's also very close to potentially seeing a big break lower. At this point, I think one needs to be on guard for further downside uh, and wait for rebounds to really be proven otherwise. And to be proven otherwise, it means waiting to see if they can start clearing some you know, key resistance levels uh, on the way up. And so that's basically where we are at this point. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.